Hello everyone and welcome to another Animal Crossing New Horizons flower guide. Today we'll be growing universal hybrids which utilize the way genetics are passed from parent flowers to child flower and enables us to produce any color variation of any flower species from just these eight pairs. Now, let me be super clear about this from the start, okay? This is just a fun little project that you can grow on your island if you're a little bored and might pop up some interesting flowers every now and then, but this is absolutely not a grow these flowers if you want to get every color of flower in the game super mega fast video, okay? I have plenty of other tutorials on how to grow those flowers in the most optimized way, so check those out if that's what you're looking for. While I'm at it, you might be one of the viewers that are not yet subscribed, so please consider subscribing for more content in the future. You can always change your mind at a later date. Also, giving the video a like helps YouTube know that people like watching my stuff too. So the method for obtaining these universal hybrids is actually pretty simple and doesn't take up a huge amount of space. As you can see, I've just got four simple plots of flowers back against this cliff here that produce the finished products. And the most you'll have to crossbreed any given species is three times, so it's super simple to follow along. Before we get started though, I do want to take just a minute and a half or so, and while I prepare my plots for this, I wanted to give a super quick explanation as to how these hybrids are able to produce any colour of flower, as well as how the flower genetics work in the game, since even though I stress in my other tutorials the importance of starting with seed bags, I still get asked the occasional question like, can I use orange roses that I already have on my island for a shortcut to step 18, for example. So if you already know how they work, or you don't care and just accept that you need to start from seed bags, skip to the timestamp shown on the video now to get to the tutorial. So I'm actually going to direct you guys over to a handy dandy infographic made by Nia of the AC Garden Science Group for a super duper easy to follow look at how the genetics work. There's a link to it in the description. But basically, each flower has three genes, four for roses, which is why the blue rose is a little bit harder to grow, and the combination of these genes determine the colour of the flower. When two parent flowers produce an offspring, they pass down one half of each gene to make up the genetics of the new flower. It's not as simple as saying just crossbreed two purple mums, for example, to get a green mum, because there are actually six different genetic combinations that result in the mum looking purple. The reason why guides on breeding flowers in New Horizons always state to start from seeds is because the flowers from seeds have a set genetic code that we can guarantee, meaning that we can easily figure out the results when we crossbreed them. This genetic system is also what makes these universal hybrids possible, since what we're aiming to create are flowers of each species with the ternary notation 111, or 1111 for roses, meaning that each gene is half full. The result is that when a pair of these crossbreed, each gene has the potential to be either empty, half full, or completely full, thus producing any potential combination of genetic sequence, or any colour of flower. So I followed a colour safe guide by Tomikaze that once again I'll link in the description for you guys, and colour safe just means that if you get the correct colour at each step, the genetics will also be correct. Right, preparation is complete and this is the layout I've chosen to use. There are four breeding plots at the bottom here and you'll want to leave two spaces between each so that if a flower spawns between the plots, you'll know which plot it came from. And then you can move your eight pairs of universal hybrids anywhere you want to on your island, but I like to keep them close by to keep tabs on them. The seeds you'll need are as followed. Basically, you'll need one red and yellow of every type, obviously orange for windflower since that replaces yellow, and then you'll need two whites for the windflower, pansy, mum, and rose, and a single white seed bag for the cosmos. Feel free to rewind and pause the video to note down all of the seeds you need. I also feel like it's necessary to point out that the red flowers along the top are just to indicate the flower type. You don't actually need them, just the seed bags. Now let's plant them and wait for the seeds to grow. Throw down the tulips, hyacinths and lilies in plot 1. This is going to be the easiest plot to keep track of by far. And in plot 2 we'll plant all of the white seeds and you'll have one space blank at the very bottom here. That right there is for your yellow cosmos seed. Now in plot 3 we'll plant all the remaining red seeds down the left hand side and then the orange windflower and the yellow pansy and mum leaving a blank space next to the red rose and red cosmos. And finally in plot 4, all we have left to plant is the single yellow rose which I'll plant at the very bottom right. So I may have gone through that rather quickly and it's kind of hard to tell what flowers are what at this stage, so let me fast forward a couple of days. 
And now the flowers are fully bloomed, you can copy my layout and easily see which flowers are which. All of the tulips, hyacinths and lilies are on the left here. All of the white seeds and the yellow cosmos in plot 2. Plot 3 has the remaining red flowers and a couple of extra seeds used for breeding. And the last plot has the yellow rose ready to go when its time comes. So what about actually crossbreeding them? Well, hopefully you'll have been pre-watering to increase the chance of the flowers producing a child when they're fully grown. But the easiest universal hybrids to grow are definitely from plot 1. With each of these flowers, there's a 50% chance to get oranges and a 50% chance to get yellows. All you need are the yellows, since those are the 1-1-1 one, one, one universal hybrids. So once you get them, move them up to your completed plot. Now don't forget you'll need a pair of each of the universal hybrids. So, of course, don't forget to continue watering your breeding plots for a chance to get a second one, and also the singular flower in your finished universal hybrid plot for a chance for it to duplicate. Now, with plot 2, there's a 25% chance to get each of the hybrids that you need for the next step. With the pansies and windflowers, we want to get blues, and with the mum and rose, we want purples. From the cosmos, we're looking to get another white. Now take your blue pansy and windflower and the purple mum and plant them in plot 4 and move the purple rose and the white cosmos to the black spots in plot 3. Once you have these, you no longer need to water any of the flowers in plot 2, so with that in mind, let's move on to plot number 3. So since we planted the seeds for the pansies and windflowers and mums on day 1, you could crossbreed these at the same time as plot 2, but I wanted to wait until they were all fully grown for simplicity's sake. So these are the results you're looking for from this plot. With the top three flowers here, you're guaranteed to get the colors which we're looking for, which is also definitely helpful. We want to get an orange pansy, a pink windflower, and a yellow mum. We can move these over to plot four to join the hybrids that we grew from plot number two. With the rose, there's a 50-50 chance to get the pink we want. Again, move that onto plot four to fill it up for the final stage. And there's also a 50% chance to get an orange cosmos from plot 3, but you'll notice that there's nowhere to plant it in plot 4. That's because this orange is our 111 universal cosmos. Plant it in your completed section to duplicate and crossbreed, and we're on the home stretch already. So here we are a few days later, and this is what you're looking for from plot number 4. From the blue and orange pansy, there's a 25% chance to get an orange, which is our universal pansy. From the blue and pink windflower, there's a 25% chance of getting another pink windflower, which is our universal windflower. From the purple and hybrid yellow mum, there's a 25% chance to get a red, which is our universal mum. And finally, from the pink and yellow roses, there's just a 12.5% chance to get a pink, which is our 1111 universal hybrid rose. Again, just like with all of the rest of them, add them to your completed universal hybrid garden and water them to try and duplicate them, and also continue watering your fourth plot to see if you'll get one from them as well. And there you have it, congratulations! You now have eight pairs of flowers that can produce any flower in the game, except for Golden Roses and Lily of the Valley. Tomikaze has actually included the percentage chance of getting each different colour from these hybrids as well, so if you're interested in that, then the link is once again in the video description. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is just an interesting project that you can do on the side if you have a bit of space and fancy messing around with flower genetics like some kind of crazy, mad Animal Crossing garden scientist. And at the end, you'll have some interesting mutant flowers which look normal, but you can produce anything. <laughs> Thank you once again for watching. Again, if you enjoyed the video and found it useful or interesting at all, then please do give it a big thumbs up since it will help me out. And tell me in the comment section below what you think about it. Are you a fan of how the flower genetics work in the game or would you prefer it like it was in the older games when it was just determined by colors? I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and maybe even learned something today. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.